Okay, we're going to look here at some um, slides from uh, a PMAT workshop that I went to. And one of the speakers was a guy named Zalman Uziskin. So Zal Uziskin is a professor at the University of Chicago. He's been around for a while. Uh, a few decades ago, he wrote a very influential geometry textbook for high school. And he presented, this is a small part of what, the talk that he gave, but I thought these uh, slides were pretty interesting and they relate directly to what we're doing this, uh, this week. So he, he had this idea, what is a trapezoid, and to try to examine a definition of it. Okay, so um, what types of quadrilaterals are found in school geometry texts today? Well, besides just a general quadrilateral, you'll see parallelogram, square, rhombus, rectangle, trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, kite, and cyclic quadrilateral uh, found in most high school geometry texts today. Some different ones may have appeared in the past. Now, if you go all the way back to Euclid, the Euclid uh, had an exclusive hierarchy of quadrilaterals. So he talked about a square having four congruent sides. That should say congruent, not equal there, but four congruent sides and four right angles. Oblongs had, they did not have four congruent sides, but they did have four right angles. Today we would call those rectangles, which are not squares. Uh, he had rhombuses, or rhombi, which had four congruent sides, but not four right angles. Those would be rhombuses. Now we would call those a rhombus, but it's not a rectangle. A rhombus is not a rectangle. Uh, he had rhomboids, which had two pair of parallel sides, but did not have four congruent sides, and did not have four right angles. So we would call those parallelograms today that are not rhombuses, not rectangles, not squares. And then he threw everything else into the class uh, called trapezia. So this is, every quadrilateral was exactly one of these five things. So this is an exclusive hierarchy. And so when we're classifying quadrilaterals, it, it basically partitions the quadrilaterals, a uh, set of quadrilaterals into these f uh, five categories. Of course, this has the advantage of everything belongs in exactly one category, but it has a distinct disadvantage to a high, to a uh, inclusive hierarchy. Now, Zal did some research on this, and he looked into uh, geometry textbooks. He found 23 before 1930 and 56 after 1930 that he looked at, and he said 13 of the found that 13 of the 23 geometry texts studied before 1930 defined both a trapezium and a rhomboid. But after 1930, none of the geometry texts identify these things. So here's a term that had been around for, for centuries, uh, but it came out of use around 1930. So sometimes we'll have a term that has a def definition, but we decide we don't want to use that anymore. Of the 15 books that define a trapezium, 14 define it as a quadrilateral with no parallel sides. Uh, in other words, not like Euclid did. All these books, which came before 1930, define a trapezoid as a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So it takes that trapezium category of um, Euclid and divides it up into trapezoids and then everything else. Of the 14 books that define a rhomboid, all, again, before 1930, 11 define it as a parallelogram having one or more oblique angles. An oblique angle is anything that's not a right angle. All 14 of the books define a rhombus as a parallelogram having congruent sides and oblique angles. Okay, now... If you have a, have a uh, hierarchy today, they, it's partially um, inclusive and partially exclusive. So it separates parallelograms and trapezoids and make these exclusive. So a parallelogram has two pair of parallel sides. A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. An isosceles trapezoid, it has, uh, it's a trapezoid, 
so one pair of parallel sides, and it has uh, two uh, sides that are not parallel, the legs are congruent. Then under parallelograms, we have rectangles and rhombi. Rhombi have four congruent sides, rectangles have four congruent angles, and then squares are both rectangles and, rhomb and rhombi. So now these are no longer exclusive over here, but inclusive. There's some advantage to an inclusive hierarchy because if, for example, if we can prove something is true for parallelograms, we don't have to reprove the thing for rectangles, rhombi, and squares because since they are parallelograms, uh, it will have the same property. And if it's really based on those two pair of parallel sides, then, then it automatically has those anyway. But um, this is not... Uh, this is very, very common today. We'll see is, is with uh, Zhao's work in a minute. But to me, it seems kind of ridiculous because if you're going to say that, that squares, all squares are rectangles and all rectangles are parallelograms, uh, then why not say all, trapez all parallelograms are trapezoids and get a further hierarchy going there? Um, we can also talk about kites, which has one pair of, of uh, congruent sides, exactly one pair. Um, this is not a very standard definition, but that's one way we could do it. So two definitions of trapezoid which are not equivalent. Um, we did, he studied 67 geometry texts since 1900. He found two different definitions of trapezoids. Seven of them defined it as a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides, and 60 of the 67 defined it as a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. All books with the first of definition are since 1964. So, Again, where it seems to be moving toward a more inclusive hierarchy as time goes on. Ultimately, terms mean what we define them to mean. And if there's some general consensus of these definitions, then of course that makes the, the terms more universal. But it's interesting here. However, it's interesting if uh, he also said in his talk, it's not in one of these slides, that if you looked at college geometry textbooks, they universally use this first definition with at least one pair of parallel sides for a trapezoid. So it's interesting there. So if you use the at least one pair of parallel sides and you for a kite, uh, you could define it as two pair of adjacent sides, two non-overlapping pair of adjacent sides congruent. Then a rhombi with four congruent sides is a kite. Our rectangles are defined to be four right angles. Then a trapezoid then is at least one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram has two pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram is automatically a trapezoid. This is a much more inclusive hierarchy, and again, if you can prove something that's true about any trapezoid, something with a pair of parallel sides, then it's automatically true of parallelograms. Now, cyclic quadrilaterals are where they have, uh, there exists a circumscribed circle. In other words, all of the vertices fall on a single circle. And I think one of the reasons why people uh, hold on to this version back here where they separate this out is they don't know what to do, to do with isosceles trapezoids. Notice that if you define it as a pair of exactly one pair of parallel sides, you could talk about an isosceles trapezoid as having a pair of congruent sides. But that gives you a problem when you're over here because if you define a trapezoid as at least one pair of parallel sides, then, and you define an isosceles trap, you define a figure as one that has at least one pair, or has a, a pair of congruent, the, the potentially non-parallel sides are congruent, the base, the uh, legs are congruent, then that class of figures includes both parallelograms and isosceles trapezoids. Okay? But what really makes the isosceles trapezoid have its properties is the fact that the base angles are congruent. So a pair of base angles congruent makes it an isosceles trapezoid. And so if we define it that way, then, then this uh, hierarchy holds together just, just fine. Um, kite. In a geometry text exam, 18 of those had definitions of kite. Um, and they looked at text published since 1990. And there are three non-equivalent definitions. One said a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of adjacent sides of the same length. Uh, the next one said a convex quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of adjacent sides of the same length. 
And the third one is the quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides congruent and no opposite sides congruent. Okay, so the most inclusive of these would be the first one. The next one eliminates the concave, what I would call a concave kite or sometimes called a dart. And then the, uh, the last one uh, is excludes, um, well it excludes a rhombus, but uh, a rhombus has, if you use the first definition, a rhombus will have all the the uh, properties of a kite. So a quadrilateral could be defined as a four-sided polygon, but what is a polygon? In the 30 high school geometry textbooks published since 1980 that they examined, they found 12 different definitions of polygon that can be grouped into five non-equivalent classes. In most book, a polygon is a union or collection of coplanar segments, each of which intersects two others, one at each endpoint, such that no two segments with the same endpoint are collinear. But some books allow a polygon to be non-coplanar, or to have sides that intersect not at their endpoints, or have consecutive sides that are collinear, or that include points in the region bounded by the segments. Uh, we will be using this the first definition, none of these last four. So, the, the thing that I want to point out is that Definitions sometimes change over time. Definitions are not standard for all of these terms. Um, but I also want to point out the advantage of an inclusive uh, hierarchy for, uh, for um, studying these figures. So if you can prove a property of something is higher up on this, this diagram, then it, it automatically holds for everything below. You don't have to reprove it. Now, this is, of course, Euclidean geometry. If you did the same thing in some other geometries, for example, in, in uh, spherical geometry, some of these things don't even exist, like trapezoids, parallelograms, anything that has to do with, if it's defined in terms of parallel sides, that doesn't, it doesn't even exist at all. And if you do with hyperbolic, since there are multiple parallels, anything that has to do with parallel sides is probably going to be more general and maybe have some subclasses there. So we'll be examining this a little bit more as we go along.